Zanzibar, like many other parts of the developing world, needs better sources of local protein. Shellfish are a prime example of protein that would be easy to produce locally. So the focus of this work is to improve the availability of locally produced and readily available food. And just as important to provide the women with an opportunity to find an additional source of income that will enable them to care better for their children and begin to move them out of poverty slowly, but in a way that's sustainable and that makes sense with local customs and traditions. Most of the women and men in the coastal villages live under conditions that we would consider very simple. They live on something like a dollar a day. There's very little opportunity economically for many of the residents of those villages outside the traditional fishing. Often their husbands are involved in fishing, and that is an activity that has been traditionally off-limits to women. Several decades ago, women in the villages began to cultivate seaweed in the lagoons. We are working with these women to teach them how to expand their farming operations to include shellfish as well as seaweed. In these pictures, we see a naturally occurring shellfish bed that is some distance off the coast. This is only accessible for harvesting at low tides that occur only during a few days of the month. The rest of the time, it's difficult for the women to get to this shellfish bed and harvest the shellfish because it is under several feet of water. The idea is to move some of these shellfish from those natural beds to the plots nearer the shore. Many of these shellfish need a hard substrate to settle on, and the lagoons by the villages tend to have soft bottom. What shellfish farming means is to create a setting in these lagoons where the shellfish can live by putting some coral rock down or by using wooden substrate to create a hard surface, and then bringing juvenile shellfish to those locations and setting up a small plot where they can grow protected from predators and eventually be harvested more easily. The main obstacles that remain in the way of this becoming a standard practice in Zanzibar are really two. One has to do with training of these women for business planning and organizing themselves into groups that are able to effectively deal with buyers of shellfish products. And the second challenge is that of providing a reliable source of juvenile shellfish and seed for these farming operations. And that will, in the long run, probably require building a hatchery for shellfish there. There is no shellfish hatchery of any sort anywhere at the moment in East Africa, and it would be a great example for the region as well as a benefit for these coastal villages if we can build one on Zanzibar. It should be possible to significantly increase the amount of shellfish available to both the native consumers of shellfish on Zanzibar and also for the tourist restaurants that are an increasingly important component of the economy of the island. I imagine it will be possible for Zanzibar to export some of the shellfish to the Tanzanian mainland and for this practice of shellfish farming to spread beyond Zanzibar to other areas in East Africa. My hope is that this is not just the beginning of a sustainable activity on Zanzibar, but a seed for something that can be significant for the wider region as well. Music